Welcome to a new set of video tutorials describing how to run chip seek analysis using Galaxy. The idea behind these videos is to describe the steps involved in the analysis and how that can be done using Galaxy. Galaxy is a method of running bioinformatics tools that are usually command line based but using Galaxy are run using graphical interfaces. So this is a really great way for non-bioinformaticians to be able to run the software themselves. The software needed to run the ChIP-seq analysis are available as tools from Galaxy's toolshed. Some of which uh, were already available for us to use, but our group also made some new tools to fulfil some specific requirements for our facility. So those tools are available publicly from the toolshed. Uh, so about two years ago I made some similar videos and these new videos are a way of updating those to include new versions of tools and explanations of those. I've also added some additional material about the mapping step at the beginning of the analysis which was uh, in response to a comment relation to the previous videos. So for the remainder of this part uh, I'm going to go over what ChIP-seq actually is uh, as a method and why it's been such an important uh, tool for biological research. I'm then going to go over the individual elements of a ChIP-seq workflow and then finally uh, give some details on how you can access Galaxy and how you can get started using it. Chromatin immunoprecipitation is a method to detect where a protein or modification is found on the genome. So it's typically used to identify where transcription factors bind, um, where histone modifications are located, but there are also uh, techniques to identify uh, where methylation occurs on the genome. So as long as you can create an antibody to detect a particular protein epitope or modification, then you can use ChIP-seq to identify the individual sites. So the aim of the ChIP protocol is to uh, generate uh, DNA enriched for where the protein of interest or modification binds in the genome. And the method de of detection nowadays is chip-seq analysis whereby you directly sequence that enriched DNA. But prior to about 2009 or 2010 chip-chip analysis was used whereby uh, labelled enriched DNA was passed over a, a chip containing sequence specific over parts of the genome. Direct sequencing in chip seq analysis has several advantages over hybridization in chip chip in that you can detect binding sites in uh, repetitive areas of sequence and avoid certain odd hybridization artifacts. So I'm going to briefly go over the different steps of the chromatin IP procedure. Um, as a bioinformatician or somebody doing the analysis this may not be immediately relevant but there are lots of points where things can go wrong here and if you have a poor immunoprecipitation you're never going to get any decent data. So we start off with the chromatin and the chromatin is the DNA represented by all the ends here and proteins or modifications on that DNA sequence. <coughs> so here we have A's and Z's and X's which represent different proteins and what we're interested in is the A protein. So the first step is to cross-link the protein to the DNA so you kind of capture 
in space and time what that chromatin looked like when you took your cell sample. Typically formaldehyde is used for this process. Then what happens is the DNA and bound protein is broken up into kind of sizable chunks uh, in a process called sonication. So what we end up with are bits of DNA that are bound by A or Z or X or maybe nothing at all. Now this is a fairly crucial step because if the sonication is poor in that the pieces of sequence are too long or you oversonicate where the pieces of sequence are too short you're not going to get good resolution when it comes to the actual sequencing of the DNA. So having a, uh, a well calibrated and uh, reliable sonicator is essential at this step. At the immunoprecipitation stage we use a antibody that is specific for the protein of interest. So hopefully we pull out pieces of DNA bound to their protein. Now antibodies differ in their specificity and you have to be very careful that the, the antibody is tried and tested either by other groups or by your own experimentation. So in this case uh, mostly all the A's are bound by the antibody but here we have an X that is also bound by the antibody so maybe this antibody is not quite as specific as we hope. And any uh, non-specific interaction here will bring in pieces of DNA that are not specific to the protein of interest and this can cause problems in downstream analysis. You know, precipitation is normally done through some sort of column and what we end up with is a series of uh, protein antibody complexes bound to their by their antibody and <coughs> in this case also some unbound DNA also gets through. So as, as I was saying before you even if you have a very good antibody you do end up with some non-specific events. So what we end up with is um, DNA that is hopefully enriched to the uh, protein or modification of interest with a small number of non-specific DNA species. Now this enriched DNA goes into something we call the library preparation because before the DNA can be sequenced it has to be prepared for whatever sequencing platform is being used. And this usually involves putting short adapters onto the ends of the DNA so that they can be bound to the uh, sequence of flow cell. Uh, and this step is usually done by the sequencing facility. Now obviously there's going to be hundreds and thousands of pieces of DNA but even so it still needs to be amplified in the library preparation step. Now this is crucial because if the pull down has been poor there are going to be few DNA species and what will happen is that a few pieces of DNA will be amplified many times so you'll just see the same piece of DNA over and over again. The aim is to have a rich or complex uh, set of DNA species that are amplified and therefore in the final analysis there is a good representation over the entire genome or more specifically the binding regions that you're interested in. Chip-seq analysis has been around since about 2009 so there have been a few papers that have gone into detail about what Chip-seq is, what can be done to improve the results etc and here's a few papers that are particularly good ones. 
recently there was a, an edX uh, online course and it had a particularly good case study about ChIP-seq chip -seq data analyses and the one I've pointed out is actually given by the, the head of the lab who produced one of the major pieces of software for chip seek analysis called Max. So this is well worth having a look at as well. Now I'm going to go over the components of a chip seek pipeline. For each stage I show the tools I'm going to cover and a shortened URL that you can follow that goes to the author's web pages. So probably the first and most important stage is the quality control stage. When the sequence comes from the sequencing facility or for the sequencer, we need to check that it's good. FastQC is a, a popular modern piece of software that allows you to see that there, there are no general problems in the sequence. If there were, we could use Trimomatic which allows us to remove the ends of reads that are of poor quality or to remove adapter contamination which is something I'll mention later. The next step is to actually map the reads from the sequencer to the genome of interest. Reads can be mapped as both single-ended and paired-ended reads uh, both of which have their advantages and disadvantages uh, and this is why I show both bow tie for short single ended reads and bow tie 2 for longer paired ended reads. Now I mentioned bow tie but there are many other um, mapping software such as BWA. In the peak calling stage we are looking to identify areas of the genome that have an abundance of chip sequence reads compared to input or background reads and I'll make a distinction there later. MAX2 is particularly popular but there are other peak callers available. Once we have a set of binding regions it's then of interest to know something about them. So, for example, CEAS, the CIS Element Annotation System, provides statistics about where those binding regions are in relation to genomic features, in particular genes. So it will tell you whether there's an enrichment of binding regions in promoter regions compared to the genomic background. RNA Chip Integrator, which is a piece of software developed by our group, is able to give specific information about the closest features to each binding region. This is particularly useful if you want to know what the uh, closest genes are to each binding region. The motif discovery stage is particularly relevant to transcription factor chip seek experiments because it will give you an indication of what particular sequence is bound by the transcription factor of interest and sometimes you're able to discover uh, additional transcription factors that bind in the vicinity of the main transcription factor Uh, in this case I've highlighted WIDA2 which I've found to be particularly useful but there are uh, others such as MEME. The remainder of the tutorials will be using Galaxy and the Galaxy main or public version can be found at usegalaxy.org however if you want to incorporate tools from the uh, public tool shed, a personal instance will be required and I'm hoping that uh, in a later tutorial I will be able to give some 
help on how to do this. In order to help orientate yourself around Galaxy, there's quite a good Galaxy 101 tutorial at the main site. I will be going over a little bit of detail on how to navigate Galaxy. Once you get confident with using Galaxy, further help can be found by going to the BioStars website where there is a specific Use Galaxy instance. And finally, uh, for those of you with Twitter accounts, there's a at Galaxy Project Twitter feed. So let's take a, a short stroll around Galaxy. Uh, this is the main public instance at usegalaxy.org. If you've not already done so, you can register with them. If you go to the user menu at the top, you can select register. The main advantage of registering is that any work uh, you do during a particular session, it will stay with your user account and will be available the next time you log in. So I recommend you do that. OK, um, so there's three main areas. You've got the Tools menu on the left. These, these different parts of the screen you can click and hold and drag to make them bigger or smaller. Uh, you've kind of got the Results viewer in the middle. And then on the right hand side you've got the History where your uh, data files and results appear as you work through a workflow. A good place to go when you land on the Galaxy website is the Start Here um, URL which takes you to the Galaxy 101 tutorial I mentioned and there are other help resources as well. Uh, just a quick mention about the Tools menu. Uh, each of these links opens up to lots of different tools so it can be quite daunting to find the thing you actually want. So there's this uh, search bar here. Um, so say you wanted to intersect two data files coordinates, you could start typing intersect here and after it has a little thing it will come up with all the tools that have intersects in their name. So for example here we have operate on genomic intervals and we have intersect the intervals of two data sets. So this can be quite handy if you're not sure where a particular tool lives. Now we're going to see a lot more of Galaxy as I go through the different stages of the chip seek analysis, so I'll mention little tips and tricks as we get to them. So I think we've gone through quite a lot there, um, and next time we will go through uh, the first stage of a chip seek analysis, which is the uh, quality control and the mapping of the reads from the sequencer. Thanks for joining me.